the name of the movie is Felon. The film begins with a man named Wade Porter who is a laborer moving in with his girlfriend Laura and their son Michael. He and Laura were planning to borrow some money in order to get married. Laura was very happy when Wade got the loan from the bank. One night Wade wakes up when he hears a sound inside the house. He quietly woke Laura and then took the baseball bat. Then he quickly headed to Michael's room. When he walked into the room, he was relieved to know that their son was okay. Wade asked Laura to look after Michael while he went searching the house. He entered the kitchen, but suddenly someone attacked him and then he ran away from the house. Wade kicks the intruder out of the house and hits him in the head with his baseball bat, accidentally killing the man in his yard. He felt guilty because he had killed someone, albeit in self-defense. A short time later, the police arrived at the scene, where Wade was accused of wrongdoing in attacking the intruder after he was leaving the house. That is why his act is not considered self-defense, especially since the man did not take anything from the house. He and his wife tried to convince the policeman that it was self-defense. But the policeman insisted on his opinion and arrested him on charges that he attacked an unarmed intruder after leaving the house. On his first day in prison, Wade got into trouble with an African prisoner named Tinto because Tinto was offended when Wade looked at him in a strange way. Although Wade stared at the man with good intentions, while in the cell he shares a cell with several burly men. They terrified him immediately because he was a new prisoner. The next day Laura visited him in prison and told him that their son kept asking about him and also said that she would find a good lawyer to get him out of prison. After that, a lawyer went to see Wade and told him that he would be sentenced to at least a few years in prison and a fine of up to $1 million. He told her that he did not have that amount, but the lawyer told him that she would do her best to clear him of all charges. That night in San Quentin State Prison, suddenly there was a disturbance in the place as the prisoners started attacking each other and they set fire to some places in the prison. Because of this, the guards had to fire tear gas in order to calm the situation. The next day, a man named Jordan visited San Quentin State Prison to meet one of the prisoners there, John Smith. Jordan tells him that he will be jailed for life because he was found to be responsible for the prison riot the night before. John didn't care what Jordan said because he just wanted to enjoy his son's birthday party. After the murder of his wife and children, John no longer cares about his life especially after he took revenge on the killers of his family. John is imprisoned after killing the family of the man who killed his wife and children. The lawyer visits Wade again, and she tells him he can get leniency and a small fine if he pleads guilty. He had no choice but to obey her to obtain a light punishment. At the urging of his lawyer, he entered a plea of no appeal in exchange for a reduced sentence of three years for manslaughter. While he was going to prison, a man named Jake, who was sitting behind Wade on the bus, told him about the most dangerous prisoner on the bus, Danny Sampson, and advised him to stay away from him. Soon after, Danny Sampson suddenly got up from his seat and stabbed another prisoner. He then gives the bloody knife to Jake in a moment of panic. Jake hides the knife under Wade's chair and forces him to shut up or Sampson will kill him. As a result, Wade is sent to solitary confinement until the investigation into the incident is completed. Lieutenant Jackson questioned Wade about the incident, but he refused to cooperate, so Lieutenant Jackson decided to send Wade to the security housing unit. The detainees who live in the security housing unit are high-profile criminals sentenced to death or life imprisonment. Prisoners are locked in the security housing unit of the prison for 23 hours and are not allowed to receive visitors for the first three months. One day when the guard is taking Wade to the prison yard where many prisoners gather, a violent fight broke out between two prisoners, but no one tried to break up their fight. It turns out that the two prisoners were fighting a fight in which Lieutenant Jackson and the other guards bet on the winner. However, after the fight ended, the guards fired rubber bullets at the two prisoners. 
One of the prisoners, annoyed by the rules set by Lieutenant Jackson, rebelled and started yelling at them. The guard took him to an isolated room where the lieutenant beat him until he was seriously injured. A few days later, Laura went to visit Wade in prison again because she missed him so much after being banned from visiting him for three months. Laura later reveals to Wade that she has no money and he suggests that she sell their possessions to make ends meet while he is in prison. After being sentenced to life in prison for wreaking havoc at San Quentin State Prison, John is eventually transferred to Wade's prison and becomes his cellmate in the security housing unit. John immediately intimidates Wade as soon as he enters the dungeon. But Wade didn't try to get into any trouble with John. The guards then told them to go to the prison yard the next day, where all the other prisoners had also gathered. Wade finally reunites with Jake, who tells him that Samson is grateful he didn't tell the lieutenant about him. On the other hand, it seemed as though John knew some of the inmates and greeted them. The other prisoners seemed hesitant and afraid of John. It turns out that John was very famous as the power man in several prisons because he was often raised. Problems and he was transferred several times from one prison to another because he had a lot of experience in prison. John begins to give Wade some advice so he can survive. One day Wade has to fight a prisoner named Turner. Wade was confused at first but quickly turned things around and managed to knock Turner to the ground. As Officer Collins was about to shoot Wade with a rubber bullet, Lieutenant Jackson stopped him and then ordered him to shoot Turner. Seeing that Collins was hesitating, Lieutenant Jackson grabbed the gun and shot Turner. Wade suspected Lieutenant Jackson of unusual behavior in shooting Turner instead of him. But John responded casually by saying that the guards are the ones who set the rules in prison so they can act arbitrarily. One day, a detective visited the prison for a routine checkup and then asked Jackson why there were so many fights in the prison. In order to avoid further suspicions, Lieutenant Jackson tried to convince the investigator that he could deal with the prisoners well, and he tried very hard to reduce the quarrels between the prisoners. Wade receives another visit from Laura, who this time brings their son, Michael. Michael seemed very happy to meet his father, who missed him so much. Laura then reveals that she has no money and is having a hard time, prompting Wade to order her to sell the house. He promised her that he will make her and their son happy when he gets out of prison because his family is the most important thing in his life. After the visit, they ask Wade to fight in a fight. Because Wade refused to fight, Jake ordered his men to beat him up. When chaos erupts, the guards fire tear gas at the prisoners trying to beat Wade while John tries to protect him from Jake's men. After the chaos, John berates Wade for being careless and disobeying orders from Jake, who turns out to be a gangster. Just like Samson, Laura was preparing the documents needed to sell the house. One day, Wade was summoned to meet Samson in the prison yard, and Jake was with him, too. It turns out that Jake complained to Samson that Wade dared disobey his orders. Samson was so disturbed that he unexpectedly ordered his men to kill Jake. After that, he offered Wade to join his group. When he returns to the detention cell, Wade asks John to advise him on whether or not he should accept Samson's offer. John suggested that he accept the offer because Samson is a dangerous gangster and runs the entire prison. The next day, Lieutenant Jackson and SGT Roberts were watching a baseball game when Roberts expressed concern to Lieutenant Jackson that they might be fired because of their repeated mistreatment and torture of prisoners. Roberts also suggested that Lieutenant Jackson start following the rules in prison and stop torturing prisoners, but Lieutenant Jackson insisted that he would continue to follow his rules in prison because he was sure he would never get caught. One night Wade asked John why he was keeping whoever killed his family alive. He said that he deliberately kept the killers alive, so that they could feel what he felt when he lost all the people he loved in this life. Laura visited him again and broke down in tears, 
when she told him that she could no longer live in poverty and could no longer struggle on her own to provide for her own needs and those of her child, she subsequently departs, leaving Wade in a rage. While he was in the prison cell with the other prisoners, Wade was suddenly attacked by one of the new prisoners, and because Wade did not reciprocate the beating, Lieutenant Jackson became upset and shot him. Lieutenant Jackson asked Wade again about the stabbing on the bus, but again fell silent and told him nothing. After refusing to tell him, Lieutenant Jackson gives false testimony that Wade was responsible for the accident, resulting in three years added to his sentence. With her mother's encouragement, Laura breaks off her relationship with Wade, and she sent him a message. When he read the letter, he became so angry that he began beating the prisoners madly. John tries to calm him down and advise him to contain his anger. But he doesn't care about anything anymore because he lost everything after Laura left. The next day, Jordan visits John in prison, where John finally tells him to stop visiting him as he is only wasting his time. Laura was packing her things with help from her mother. When she leaves Wade's things at the place, Michael asks her why she left his father's things and she tells him that they won't live with Wade anymore. Michael seemed disappointed after hearing his mother's words because he loved his father very much, and because she realized that her son loves his father very much and could not live without him. She decided to return to visit Wade in prison and told him that she would wait for him for Michael. Wade is very happy to hear Laura's words. Wade immediately tells John the news when he returns to his cell. After they talk, Wade devises a plan to reveal the truth about what they are living in prison. They are starting to think of a plan. Wade asks Lieutenant Jackson to let him interview a new prisoner who has just been transferred to the prison. He tells him that he wants revenge because Tinto threatened him earlier. Lieutenant Jackson allowed Wade to beat Tinto on one condition that he fight him to the death. Wade asked Laura to meet Jordan because according to what John said, Gordon will help him by revealing the persecution that Lieutenant Jackson inflicts on them in prison. Finally, the day of battle arrived Wade and Tinto engaged in a very fierce battle. Wade had a hard time taking on Tinto. Meanwhile, Laura and Jordan are on their way to jail with the detective, where they intend to capture Lieutenant Jackson. John started ready with his improvised weapon, which he had hidden in his glasses. After a while, Wade managed to turn things around in his favor, but he refused to kill Tinto after he defeated him, which angered Lieutenant Jackson very much, and when the lieutenant was about to shoot Wade, John unexpectedly intervened and stood in front of Wade to protect him and the rest of the prisoners. Lieutenant Jackson wanted to shoot all the prisoners, but Roberts tried to calm him down and warned him not to act rashly as the consequences would be dire. Lieutenant Jackson ordered the prisoners to be returned to their cells, and when John and Wade entered their cell, one of the guards suddenly entered them and took them back to the battlefield, after which Lieutenant Jackson entered them and prepared to kill them, but before that Roberts chose not to support Jackson in what he wanted to do. On the other hand, Officer Collins secretly reactivated the surveillance cameras for Lieutenant Jackson to be filmed torturing prisoners. When Lieutenant Jackson approaches to kill Wade, John acts immediately and attacks him, but unfortunately another officer shoots John and he dies from his injuries. Officer Collins quickly presses the emergency button and the guards enter the battlefield. Meanwhile, Laura and the detective arrive at the prison. The detective was able to uncover Lieutenant Jackson's corruption and oppression and Wade's further sentence was mitigated. Wade is eventually released after 15 months in prison and is finally reunited with Laura and Michael. And here the movie ends. Thank you for watching.